I love sharing easy and affordable DIYs and today's video is no exception. I'm going to be sharing five decor items that you could put on a cheer tray and the good thing about it or the best thing about it is they cost under five dollars each to make. And that's a bargain y'all. <laughs> on this channel I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor and if we haven't met yet my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Y'all, this video is part of a collaboration playlist and it's called the 5 Under 5 Challenge and it's hosted by Farm Charm Chic, The Crafty Cove, and this month's guest host is Craft Away With May. I'll have a link to their channels as well as to the playlist in the description box below. You guys know where to find it. You're going to want to be sure and check it out to see what other affordable inspiration is shared. And okay, that's enough talking about it. Let's be about it and let's get crafting. I love to craft my stash and in my stash was this little chalkboard easel thing and I'm going to turn it into a little sign. I start off by sanding it down because I wasn't sure how well paint would stick to it, especially if I added a decal. And I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White and I give it two good coats. And then I'm taking a cereal box and I trace out the shape of a truck and then I just cut it out <laughs> and I taped down the piece so I could paint it with folk art paint in the color faded jade. I used a sponge stopper that I got from Dollar Tree to paint the tires black. I just place it down and kind of swirl it and then I'm using a smaller sponge stopper and the snow white color to make the inner part of the tire and I'm just pressing down lightly and swirling it around. And then I use a black paint pen to write Farm Fresh on the truck, but I changed that later. And I cut out a decal with my Cricut, but y'all, let's be real with one another. These letters were really way too tiny for me, so I just used the word sunflowers and I attached it to the easel. And then I used Waverly chalk paint in the color black and my sponge dauber to stencil it on, and it came out surprisingly well. <laughs> and I decided to hand letter the other stuff on there. Not quite is happy with how that turned out and I'm you know I'm not trying to be negative but I just think I should have like sketched on the words first you know to make it neater. I did the same at the bottom and ordinarily I like my handwriting but for some reason today it just kind of felt off it just didn't I don't know, it just wasn't vibing with it but I did hot glue my cereal box cardboard truck to the sign and then I added a smaller sunflower that I got from Dollar Tree to the truck. And then I added a black circle inside each tire with a, like a smaller dauber. And I had these little arrows that I got from Dollar Tree and I just painted them with folk art paint in the color iced coffee and hot glued it to the sign. And I don't know if you noticed, but I had painted some dots across the top, but it wasn't looking like I imagined. So I just painted over those and added two small sunflowers and they came in a pack from Dollar Tree. And I wrote in five miles and painted over the bottom and rewrote it, rewrote locally grown. And this is how the first project turned out. Well, maybe not the neatest. I think it, maybe, it, maybe it looks more homemade, you know, like a sign you might see on the side of the road. And as far as cost, you know, I really don't count paint, vinyl, or glue and stuff like that because I think of those as more basic supplies, but the sign itself was $1.25. The sunflowers came in a pack and I still have some left over. They were $1.25. The arrow came in a pack and it was $1.25. The total just for those materials is around $3.75. So if you add even like a buck for the uh, material, that basic materials that's 475 pretty good deal if you ask me now if y'all are my crafting besties you know that I have a ton of scrap fencing material on hand and I love to use it for crafting and I often find inspo on Etsy and you know just through Google and so I found some gnomes and I thought they'd look great on tear trays so I printed them out to the size that I needed and I started to trace them out so that I could cut them out with my jigsaw and then I used Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultramat Paint in the color Linen and I painted the whole shape and Captain Supervised. <laughs> and I really don't have a firm plan on how I was going to paint this, but I started out with some horizontal lines and I used Folk Art Paint in the color Faded Jade. And then I did add some vertical lines and I used the same color. And I'm still in the hunt for a really good jadeite color, so if you know one, let me know. I just want a vintage -y type color jade, but anyway, I think I'll know it when I see it, but oh, and I've got some help from Neo. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like, especially when I don't have a plan, like I just kind of go with it. And I added some lines and I think I was kind of going for a plaid look, but I didn't quite achieve that. And I used folk art paint in the color iced coffee to do those other lines. Oh, well, there's a visit from socks. Anyways, all three have been in the video. We weren't even six minutes in y'all. So anyway, anyway, so let's be honest about this. I'm not loving the hat, but that's okay. And I used that iced coffee and painted on the sides for the for his outfit thing. And I used Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White. And I'm going to use that to use that in a cheaper brush to kind of make his beard look more wispy. 
that a word? <laughs> and I'm going to use a smaller brush and try to define the beard a little bit more. And I use these half round beads that I had in my stash. I'm going to use folk art paint in the color linen to paint those. And I just take them, put them on some masking tape to hold them down while I paint them and then let them dry. And then I didn't want to do too much this little guy. So I hot glued on the nose and a sunflower. And this ended up costing me next to nothing. But if you bought one of the gnome shapes or wood pieces at Dollar Tree, that would be $1.25. Sunflowers come in a pack of like six or so. And I think those were $1.25. And if you add in a dollar for the other supplies, you're at $3.75 tops. So cute and easy to make. Now I'm going to make a girl gnome. And you see me tracing on my shape on the wood piece so I can cut it out with my jigsaw. And like the other gnome, I'm painting with rust oleum's chalked ultra matte paint in the color linen. And I'm just going to do like a check pattern on this one. So I put some washi tape down and painted it, let it dry. And I put the tape going on the other way, you know, as usual. And then when I pulled the tape up, I pulled up paint. So <laughs> let's go to plan B. I painted the entire hat portion in um, folk art paint in the color faded jade. So we're starting over. <laughs> and then I thought the watermelon color would really pop. And it popped too much <laughs> so i tried to dry brush it and then i sanded it down and repainted the hat in the faded jade and then i repainted her outfit in the color iced coffee and while i was leaning towards that more minimal minimal look i didn't want it like too plain so i added some polka dots to the hat and to keep it the same as the other known i gnome i glued on the nose and a sunflower in the center and this cost me next to nothing y'all i had the wood but even if you bought the shape or wood from Dollar Tree, that's $1.25. The sunflower came in the pack, and I used just one, but even if not, that's $1.25 for the pack. And then add another dollar for the basic materials, you're looking at $3.75. It's a very affordable piece for a cute decor piece. Now, some of the wood that I used is scrap wood I have on hand. And when I go to Lowe's, I look in their scrap wood area to see what's on the markdown cart. And in my last five under five video, I went into a little more detail about you know, shopping the wood section at the home improvement store. You can check out that video in the link in the corner. But anyways, that's where this wood came from. And it was a long piece and I had them cut it down to, uh, for free for, to a size that could fit in my car so I could take it home. And in case you hadn't guessed, this is going to be a book stack. And I cut these down to about four inches long and I stained them with Waverly wax in the color antique and just wiped them off with a damp, damp, um, piece of cloth. And then I used folk art paint in the color iced coffee and I painted one edge of the book and what would be like, you know, the binding of the book in the iced coffee. And thankfully, Captain's Tail didn't get in the way. <laughs> I then used my Cricut to print out the words, collect beautiful moments. And I was going to reverse stencil them on and I attached them to the spine of the book. And then I covered those letters up with the faded jade paint. And I also painted the top and the rest of the sides as well. And the next step is just to remove those letters from the books. And I finished it off by gluing them together and adding some twine. Now this little book stack turned out so adorable and I love it. Um, I got the wood for less than $3 and I have plenty left over. So this project really could be less than $5 for you to create. I don't even know how to figure up the cost. But this final project is probably my favorite. It's going to be a cutting board and I use some of my leftover fencing material and trace. I just trace out a cutting board shape and I'll cut it using my jigsaw. And I was going to stain it initially with Waverly Wax and Color Antique, which I did. And, you know, I just paint it off and wipe it off with a damp scrap piece of cloth. Easy peasy to do. And then I'm going to be painting it with folk art paint in the color Faded Jade and Antique White. And then I just paint the taped off areas. And then I pull back the tape while it's still wet. And I got this really pretty rub on transfer from Dollar Tree. And I chose the Sunfire one. And y'all, this rub on transfer, <laughs> it's on like this parchment paper type paper. And if you, you really have to hold it down, otherwise it kind of like slides around and it was kind of frustrating to be honest. But other than that odd paper, it works just like a regular rub on transfer. And y'all, this turned out amazing. It's awesome. And it's definitely my favorite piece from today's DIYs. I just love it so much, but you'll have to tell me in the comments below, which one was your favorite. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. And you know, I was kind of looking, I was like, oh, I have on my jacket. I'm looking kind of, kind of spiffy. Maybe it's because it's my birthday month. 
maybe because this is what I wore to film my other videos from my other job. I don't know. But anyway, I appreciate the company here in my craft space today. And thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It helps my channel to grow and for YouTube to push it out into the YouTube land. And, you know, maybe share it with some other people that might find some inspiration from what I do. And if you want to follow me in other places, or if you want to follow me here on YouTube, or in other places like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. <laughs> Bye!